We're talking chainsaw maintenance. Troy, welcome. We're going to jump right into a couple of the really common things if your saw is not performing well. The first one is going to be check your air filter. They're usually fairly easy to access with just a couple of screws or maybe even a couple of quick pop tabs um, to pull the, the air filter cover off. So that's clean and dirty right next to each other, correct? Yeah. You really want to look to see whether it's got a fine sawdust packed into all the little pleats and ridges on your filter. You can see there's some sawdust stuck in there. To clean it, just go ahead and take it out and uh, in the field, just tap it on a log. It'll help loosen a bunch of that sawdust and, and knock it out. You should really be cleaning it, you know, every week. If you're, if you're out cutting firewood all week, you should, you should be cleaning it pretty regularly. So that's what's in there. That's the bad stuff. Yep. Looks like a cinnamon toast bagel or something. Looks, looks delicious. The next thing you're going to want to look at is probably your spark plug. Really, the spark plug shouldn't be going bad or anything, but if you have a little bit too much oil in your fuel or you've been running some poor grade of fuel, a plugged air filter, you can actually end up with a bunch of carbon deposits on your spark plug. It'll cause some very weird symptoms from hard starting to not wanting to idle to maybe not wanting to to rev up as high as it should that would be what a, a good spark plug looks like if it's bad you're gonna see it'll be very black it may even have some like crusty looking stuff forming on the surfaces of it which would be carbon deposits from excess amounts of oil or fuel all right air filter spark plug what are some other things we should look out for? Pay attention to the, the drive sprocket, which is attached to the clutch drum. It'll be uh, under the side cover of the bar. It tends to get neglected. A lot of people don't really pay attention to it, but they wear quite rapidly, actually. You know, every, every couple of chains that you have to purchase, you probably need to be replacing your, your drive sprocket there. I've got an example here of a brand new one and one that is way beyond its its service life. You'll just notice a groove forming right in the middle of it where the chain runs around it constantly. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, pretty striking. If you keep having derailing issues with your chain, this may be one of the, the issues that huh. you have. There is a difference between a lot of homeowner saws, which use what's called a spur drive sprocket, and then a lot of your professionals have what's known as a rim drive sprocket, which allows us to swap out the sprocket without having to replace the drum. It's just a cheaper way of still maintaining the saw since the drum will last significantly longer than the sprocket will. What about the bar? There's a few things you're going to want to check. Especially every time the bar comes off the saw, you're going to want to clean the rear of the bar where the bar mounts to the, to the power head. You want to make sure that, that surface is, is clean. The other thing is, is usually there's a small hole on the bottom of the bar or the top side of the bar. Sometimes it's the same hole that your chain tension pin comes in. Sometimes it's a separate hole, but you wanna make sure that that does not have any sawdust packed in it. That hole is how the chainsaw moves the oil into the bar to oil your chain. So it's very critical that that hole remain open. Weren't we gonna make a, a beard oil? It was called like bar oil and sawdust oh or something. So a lot of times I see folks with the logo on the bar upside down. What's up with that? Contrary to what a lot of people believe, that's actually common practice. And so by flipping it, you actually distribute the wear of the bar evenly on both the top and bottom side. Obviously, most of your cutting takes place on the bottom side of the bar, so it tends to wear a little quicker. How often do you flip? Uh, every time my chain comes off. All right. I've also noticed this weird blue color pop up on my bar when I'm going hard. So that's a sign that you're probably not getting the oil onto your bar that you should um, and that the bar is beginning to overheat. It can show up as a blue coloration on your bar. If there's no paint on the bar, you may also notice that maybe the paint is turning a, a black or brown color. That's from the excessive amount of heat. If you do notice any uh, smoke or discoloration forming on your bar, you should really stop cutting, remove the bar from the saw and check that that oil hole on your bar is, is clear. We're looking at a, a chainsaw bar that's in good working order. You'll notice there's no discoloration. There's no burr on the top. So you've mentioned this burr. What causes that? What is it? Where's it at? So the burr is going to form right along where the chain runs. 
if your saw is cutting good, but it might only cut the depth of the bar and then all of a sudden it seems like it stops, that's actually that burr grabbing on to the inside of the cut. Everything could be working fine, but if you put enough hours on it, a burr will form. It forms more rapidly if you have an issue going on. Overheating the bar will cause the burr to form really rapidly. You can actually take your fingernail and slide it across the side of the bar and slide it off the edge. And if you feel your nail getting caught on something, that is the burr that has formed on your bar. All you need is a flat file, just a stroke or two, and it'll knock that burr off. I still think we should have the idea of the chainsaw necklace, but yeah. You know. And the beard oil, the sawdust bar oil beard oil. I'll stick with my WD-40 clone. A niche market, yeah. <laughs> Troy's Maintenance, it'll keep your saw screaming. We will see you and your chainsaw in the woods.